snatch recoveries are the most dangerous way you can recover your four wheel drive, yet so many people use it as their go-to recovery method because it's so effective. Well, over the years I've done a number of videos to explore methods and techniques that are used in snatch recoveries. I've even done a testing to show how much force can be used in a snatch recovery. So in this video, I've basically compiled those pieces of content into one single video so that you can come to one place and really learn a bunch of stuff so that you can get out there and wheel well. Here at Mad Map 4 Drive, I'm all about educating and building the four wheel drive community so we can wheel well. I would love you to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell so you can get all of the notifications. So the idea with this first video is I wanted to demonstrate just how much force can be in a snatch strap if something should go wrong. Let's say a recovery point fails or comes away from a chassis. Now, in this video, it's not about a bow shackle breaking. These are rated. They're not really gonna break or fail. That's not the issue. This is the very bow shackle used in that demonstration. It's actually deformed after hitting the tree. Now about the tree, a lot of people got so upset that I used a tree in the demonstration. Just so you know, two years on, the tree's healthy and there's not even a problem. I've wanted to do this demonstration for quite a while to show you how much force and energy is in a snatch recovery. Look at what the bow shackle's done to this tree. Absolutely huge amount of force to do that. For this recovery, you may have noticed the chain. That was purely a safety so that this end, if it failed, it didn't come back and hit me because I've got the bow shackle in there. Please, whenever you're doing a snatch recovery, be safe. Isn't that just terrifying, the amount of force if something goes wrong in a snatch recovery? After doing that testing, I was so, well, basically had the wind put up me so much so, I no longer carry a snatch strap in the four wheel drive with me. Well, that's not entirely true. I carry one, but it's a worn out one in as much as it has no more stretch left in it. And I just use that as a toe strap. I don't like snatch recoveries any longer. Now, this next video, I wanted to explore air dampers. You see, I base all of my videos on the New South Wales and ACT Four Wheel Drive Association's training manuals. And I've always been a little bit unsure about what they say in those manuals, i.e. put an air damper in the middle third of a snatch strap when you're doing that sort of recovery. I've always felt like, you know what, I think there's more to it than just that. And our testing comes up with some very interesting results. Now I explain a lot of the testing and I explain how I do it in the video. So let's cut over to that and I'll be back with you in a few minutes. So here we have a single air damper with no weight in the middle third of the strap. Now I'm going to up it and I'm going to have two air dampers, no weight on the strap. Now a single air damper with about five kilos of weight in the middle third. Now we'll up it, two air dampers, five kilos of weight in each and look at the result. Impressive. Wow, absolutely destroyed the air damper. But you know what? It stopped the bow shackle before it got to my recovery point. And I would rather destroy an air damper than destroy somebody's life. So let me show you how we set up for that last demonstration. Firstly, each air damper had about five kilos of gravel inside the pocket. Second, we put this air damper as close to the rated bow shackle as we could. Now in my demonstration, I actually had a fuse there. You're obviously not gonna do that. Down the middle third here, as per most four wheel drive training manuals, I've always advocated that you put an air damper in the middle third and that would give you a safe recovery. I actually don't know that that's the correct advice and I think we actually need to consider putting an air damper at each end as well as per the demonstration today. So I would suggest the safest recovery is going to be three air dampers loaded with about five kilos of gravel in each air damper and that's going to give you a good result. But you decide. Isn't that interesting? Now, after I filmed that, I was on a recent TV show called The Off-Road Adventure Show and we went up Cape York. 
And we were doing a very serious recovery scenario and we had snatch blocks in there, we had double line winch pulls and so on, and we were lowering a vehicle over a very steep escarpment, one we called gunshot. Now, halfway through that, the snatch block failed. Now, prior to setting it up, I said to them, guys, we need to make sure that we put that five kilos of weight into each of the air dampers. And so we did. Now, when that snatch block broke, the air dampers did their job and they all ended up looking like this because like I'd rather destroy an air damper and save a vehicle, save someone's life because I've done the job properly. And we saw the exact result in a real life scenario that we just saw in that video. So I'm absolutely convinced that we need to use three air dampers, five kilos of weight on any sort of snatch recovery or winch line recovery. All right, now we go into something interesting. I've been thinking to myself, how can we make snatch recovery safer if they do have a failure? If, for example, a recovery point comes away from a chassis. Now I want to clarify something right here. A lot of people, when they watched this video, they came back to me and said, you know, the bow shackle broke and all of this. We're talking about a rated bow shackle. No way is this going to break or fail in any recovery that we do in a four wheel drive scenario. They are just plain too strong. This is rated at 4.75 metric tons. It's got a, a safety rating of like five. So it's good for like 20 tons. In, in, at its safety rating, I mean, you know, it's just ridiculously uh, uh, too strong for these scenarios. So we're not seeing bow shackles breaking. This is the only one I know of that actually deformed it when I, in that previous video. So I, I just want to say that where we see things go wrong is people snatching off or re doing recoveries using a tow ball. Dangerous as, just don't even go there. The other place is where people are using their hit receiver where they've taken the tow ball out and they put a bow shackle through that hole. The reason that is dangerous is because the loading comes in a longitudinal moment into the welds and they're not designed for that load to be induced into them that way. So never use that either. So in this next video, I wanted to explore ways we could make it safer and I found a company that was making snatch straps with a tether. And I was kind of, that's interesting, I'd like to explore that one. I was a little bit unsure of exactly how it would work, although I liked the idea. So in this video, we go through and explore a snatch strap with a safety tether on it. You'll enjoy this. We're gonna test it out today. We're gonna to actually blow this apart at its fuse and see what happens. Now, what have we got in place? Well, we've looked at this whole setup and made it absolutely safe, even though we're doing something really dangerous because we're actually gonna blow a brand new snatch strap at its fuse point. And that is right here. Now, we don't know whether it's gonna be this fuse that blows or the fuse on the other end. So we've got it set up with cameras so we can watch everything. Then we've got the tether secured back on a separate recovery system to the tree to make it so that it should, if it works as per the design, it should capture the blow and snatch strap before it comes and hits my vehicle. Now, we have got some reservations about this. We understand the principles that have been applied to the design of this strap, but we're not convinced it's actually going to work. And this is the reason why. When we're doing a snatch recovery, the vehicle's traveling at a fair rate of knots. So if the fuse blows right here, then this tether becomes quite tight quite quickly. And when that happens, I've got to stop the vehicle between the fuse blowing and this reloading the snatch strap and failing back here. Now, the design might be clever enough that this stitching here fails before the snatch strap gets any real load in it. It may be that this breaks quite easily. We don't know, but we're gonna test it out right now and find out what happens. So what have I got on the vehicle to make, the, make my recovery point here so it doesn't fail? I've got a Factor 55 hitch receiver into my tow pack. I've got a Gator Jaw soft shackle, which is rated to 14 and a half thousand kilos or tons, I should say. 
So it, it, this is massively strong and safe. And then I've got my fuse here, which is on a 9,000 kilogram strap. And that's where we expect this to fail, providing this has all been done right. And then the tether comes back to a separate mounting point on the vehicle. So we know that this is safe. We've also added some Lexan sheeting to the back of the 80 series so that I'm protected. I've got a draw system and a cargo barrier in there. So I am absolutely certain and confident that I am safe. Okay, and uh, that's what's set up. So let's find out now. Let's go and do this. Well, what can I say? Fail! A tether strap. Pretty well pointless, wasn't it? Now, we did that test twice because we had two snatch straps, and this is the first one, and it failed at the fuse, which is exactly what we want to happen, but the tether failed, which is what we expected, and it was pretty much didn't slow, seem to slow it down one iota. Now, this is the second one, and it failed at both points. That's that grey there is from where it was around the bow shackle and came came out and it's actually melted it. It's actually generated some, a fair amount of heat in there. Now the beauty is it did fail at the fuse point as per design, which is excellent. And I want to show you a few things up this end, which I think are, are really important. You see, this is where generally when people are getting killed in snatch recoveries, it is where it's happening up here. It's because they're not using correct equipment in this end of the recovery, all right? So these components that are failing are weaker than the fuse. Now, obviously with this scenario, I've got the Factor 55 hitch link, in, uh, hitch receiver in place, and these have got a nice radius section up inside the corner here so that the, the gator jaw has absolutely no damage from being, uh, you know, having that sort of force induced. Nor down in here, where the snatch strap was. There's absolutely no damage to this part of the gator jaw from that snatch. And the other point would be up in here. Again, there's just no damage or deformation in that area. So the gator jaw and the hitch receiver have done their job absolutely perfectly, which is good to see. And uh, the snatch strap in here has done its job perfectly. The fuse has done its job perfectly. But the concept of a tether being sufficient to control this sort of snatch recovery does not work. So this next video, I did it with a mate of mine, Aaron, who's a real wealth of technical knowledge. And he and I were watching the footage back and we've gone, gee, there's some other things going on here that we didn't pick up on the day of the actual filming. So we went into the studio and we have a real good discussion about that. It's pretty cool. I reckon you're going to love it. Well, we came across a company that makes snatch straps with tethers. And they've found them to be very successful and uh, they've been widely used. And they said, go ahead and test it. So that's what we've done. Well, the end result was pretty much failed and it didn't work. Now, um, I, I'm not out here to destroy a company that's trying to do the right thing at all. I've actually spoken to the company. I'm not going to name them at this stage, but they're actually gone back to the drawing board, gone, oh, wow, we, we have not had that testing um, fail like that. We're going to redesign it. Now, we've given them a few of our ideas and they're going to implement those. And in time, we will come back to you with some testing on that. But let's unpack this, Aaron. All right. I think, I think first things first, in terms of having discussion with these guys about 
what the majority of their customers use these tethered types of straps for. It's even though these are snatch straps, yep. it doesn't sound like they've been necessarily utilizing them under what we'd class as a, a typical heavy duty snatching style of recovery. Yeah, it's more of a tow type of environment, yeah, a big sure. heavy truck towing, like slowly getting up to speed sort of thing. So, so in that respect, um, I, I think we've probably subjected these straps to forces that, you know, under a normal recovery that they're not necessarily going to see. Yes, but they're designed to see. So, so true. So, what the purpose of this testing, and it's important you understand this. The purpose of this testing was to fail the snatch strap at its fuse point and see if the tether would capture it. That's why we didn't put air dampers on this. Um, all right. So we made, in, as, I, as I say in the other video, that's a fuse point there at the um, at the end of the stitching. It's designed to fail there, and that's exactly what it did. Mm -hmm. So the snatch strap worked perfectly. It did its job. But you want to tell them, Aaron? Well, um, as you can see, the tether, which is also supposed to be attached to the strap. Uh, yeah, so well, well, it would be in the, the yeah. inside of this one. This, here we go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, so yep. the tether that's supposed to be still attached to that strap, uh, on the second strap that we, we blew apart, it ripped the tether clean off it. At both ends, which was amazing. And in the high speed footage, you can see this just flying through the air by itself on yep. its own. It was a huge failure in that, that respect. It did not retain or uh, you know, cushion any of the energy that was in that strap when the strap blew at its fuse. Yep. And I think when, when we had our initial discussion about this after it happened, um, we thought, well, you know, un under an arrangement, because it's not a particularly long tether. No. And we're, we're talking about 700 mil. Oh, it's a bit longer than that, but yeah. Well, by the time it's, it's stitched in yeah. there, you know, yeah. it's, it, it's you know, yeah. we'll call it you know, under a metre. So one of the things with a snatch strap is they're designed to stretch. We all know that. Yep. And, and a rough, rough number is about 20%. Okay, so this is a nine metre strap. So we're looking for about a bit over a metre and a half of stretch before it's fully loaded and the fuse should fail. Now we looked at this at the footage and did some very, very rough calculations and it did go to about a metre and a half of stretch. You could see the snatch strap get to, to light tension mm. and then when it failed, the vehicle had travelled about a metre, metre and, and a half. half. This is what actually broke the tether, was that metre and a half of recoil. Yep. So the snatch strap trying to go back to zero position. Another way of saying it, imagine if we loaded this snatch strap up to its um, uh, fully stretched length before the fuse blew, and then we cut the fuse with a knife. The, the snatch strap's gonna stretch back to its free length. Yep. It's going to that, try and return back to its free length. Yes, yeah. it's already stretched. Yeah, that would be enough to blow the tether in part in, in half and and make it redundant. So, so in our initial discussions, what we thought was potentially going to happen because the tether's not particularly long, we thought, well, once the the, the vehicle's in in full motion and it blows that fuse, the vehicle's not going to take very long to get that tether effectively tight, tight and then it's just going to tear it off anyway. But when we reviewed the high speed footage. What you can actually see is that the strap, the, the tether fails under the recoil of the strap before the vehicle has even had a chance to move probably another 20 centimetres. Oh, if that. If it, that. it happened so, so fast. So fast. Effectively, if the strap's breaking at nine tonne, then this tether is having to try and absorb that sort of energy as it's recoiling back the other way. Mm. Um, and it's certainly the, the energy in the strap's not dissipating at a rate fast enough you know, for the length of this tether. Yeah, uh, it's, so it, look, what we, we wanna keep doing this sort of testing, because at the end of the day, we wanna understand how to make this safer. Now, we're not scientists, we're just blokes who have you know, got a bit of experience and we, we talk about it, we think about it, and we try and challenge ourselves, and we talk to other experts and get their input. And uh, But what we would love is, is, is somebody who can help us with 
either financially doing this, because at the moment we're doing it all off our own bat and the, you know, the pockets are a bit, a bit shallow, um, but we also would like to start getting some load cells involved mm -hmm. so we can start testing some of the forces involved. So if you know anybody in that industry and can hook us up, we would really be interested in that. Now, so, so just to summarize this video, we want to just go through uh, a, a couple of things just to help people have some takeaway that's going to help them use snatch recoveries and do sa snatch recoveries safe. Now, I think most people are well aware that a, um, a bogged vehicle is three times the weight or thereabouts of its standing weight. So if it weighs two ton uh, on the, before it goes in the bog hole, when it's fully in the bog hole, it's six ton. Yeah, so we're talking about generally accepted yeah, yeah, principles of, of recovery here. Correct, yeah. The other thing is a snatch strap, when it's wet, is reduced in its effectiveness. It doesn't stretch as much. So always keep that in mind. And uh, let's face it, oftentimes when we're doing those heavy snatch recoveries, it's because we're in a bog hole, which is wet. So keep that in mind when you're doing your snatch recovery. Always attempt to tow a vehicle out before you have to apply those snatching forces to it. Correct. You know, the first the, the first opportunity shouldn't be just you know whack the strap, the strap on, on and hit it yeah. as hard as you can. That's just unnecessary. And we, I get it. I mean, you you go a snatch strap is an extremely effective recovery tool, yeah, and it's sure. quick and easy. So the temptation is grab the strap out and hook it on, but they're just so dangerous. I don't think it's worth that. Look, I, I think it's worth talk, talking about um, a specific point here, which is a lot of people will watch this video and go, but Matthew, you've attached your 80 series to a tree. I mean, that is not really representative of the, the forces that you're going to find in a snatch. I mean, how often are you in a situation where the vehicle is that stuck that it's not going to move at all. At all. Mm. Well, the point of the testing, and it was done in in this way, is because we're simulating an in, you know not necessarily a worst case environment, but certainly an environment which you do find yourselves in. Yeah. And and I'll use this as an example. How often do guys drive into bog holes without testing to see what's in there first? <laughs> all, all the time. I mean, yeah. Yeah. that's just part of the fun and what we do. Yeah. Yep. Now, what a lot of people love to do with wet and boggy tracks is throw logs into them yep. to try and get some, some traction. But they all end up in the bottom of that bog hole. So you drive in there in your four-wheel drive, then all of a sudden you've got rocks and logs that are going to anchor your vehicle into that bog hole. It gets caught up underneath yep. a, you know, a chassis cross member, underneath the gearbox, and very quickly you've got a vehicle that's anchored in the forward direction. So then you start hitting it with a snatch strap, and that is going to be effectively the same situation where you've got an almost immovable object there. Yeah. And something's got to give. Either the vehicle's going to break, a recovery point's going to come off. Yeah. Hopefully they were engineered to the point where they aren't the weakest link in the system. Yes. And, and, you know, and that's always the, the concern when people do silly things like do a snatch recovery off a tow ball. You know, the Please tow don't. ball <laughs> is... is not the strongest component in that recovery, and that's why they they break and they fail. Correct. So whilst this is a fairly extreme situation, it it's not without its merit. Yeah. Actually, Aaron, something else we were we were talking about beforehand. So on this strap here, it's got the rating of this strap. Now this mm -hmm. is, um, as I say in the video, the first video there. Um, this is a nine thousand kilo strap. Okay, and its length is nine meters. So that means that coming, this is just coming back to something we were going to say earlier, that when this tether fails, or the fuse fails, this tether is being subjected to approximately nine tons of force. Can you see that taking that, taking that force? It's that's well, uh, it's not going. You know, it's not going to be entirely nine tons of force. No, of I mean, the not. energy does dissipate as a, as the the as strap re recoils, but yeah, certainly. Yeah. It's not zero force, and, and clearly it's still far more than that tether is designed to handle. We would really love to hear your thoughts because what I've found is as we've been doing these videos, there's been lots of really healthy conversation and discussion around this subject because there's a whole bunch of you guys who have just watched this video who have got exactly the same heart as us, and that is to make these recoveries safer. So if you've got a positive cont uh, contribution, and it doesn't have to agree with what we're saying, but just keep it positive, 
we want to hear about it. And if you have any way of helping us keep this um, testing happening, we would really love to hear from you because um, we feel that this is adding a significant amount of educational value to the four wheel drive community. So how do I sum all of this up? Well, I'm going to do that by introducing you to a concept we call the hierarchy of recovery. Now this is a technique that was developed by a company here in New South Wales, Australia called Get About Training. These guys are experts at four wheel driving and training and oftentimes I'll ring up John and say, hey John, I'm thinking about doing this. What do you think? They're one of my bouncing boards for technical stuff. So the hierarchy of recovery is simple, simply this and it's really simple. It is engage four wheel drive and air your tires down. That's the first thing you would do in any recovery scenario. It's preventative in a lot of cases. The next thing you're going to do in, a, in it is you're going to pack rocks, you're going to use some traction boards, you're going to get your shovel out and dig around and clear the vehicle or so on and so forth. You're going to use really simple sorts of recovery methods. That's the second thing you're going to do. Third thing you're going to do, you're going to use a toe strap. Remember, I talked about my snatch strap that's no longer got stretch in it? That's my toe strap and that's where I would use it in this level of the hierarchy of recovery. And then we come to a winch recovery. You see, a winch recovery is nice and controlled. Basically, you can turn it on and turn it off. So you can see if your anchor point's moving or something's failing or something's not going quite right, you can stop winching. That's why we like the winch recovery. Then after that, we come to the snatch recovery, which really is the most dangerous recovery method out there. And the reason is it is an uncontrolled energy release. You see, we drive a vehicle really fast. It loads up that strap and either you recover the vehicle or something fails or whatever goes on. But there's no way of you stopping if something's going wrong. And that's why I don't like it because of that uncontrolled energy release. Now, if you're a company that's been watching this and you'd like your products to go through some of this sort of testing and you reckon your product's up for it, I'm always looking for sponsors and companies that can have got a passion for really helping people understand how to get out there and wheel well. So if you're up for it, and I know that's a bit of a challenge, but if you're up for it, I'd love for you to inbox me or just get in touch with me so that we can talk about how we can make that happen. Now, I hope this video has been educational and helpful and helps you get out there and wheel well. And if it has been, I would really love it if you'd hit that subscribe button and hit the bell so you can get, get all of those notifications from the Mad Matt 4-Wheel Drive channel. I'm Mad Matt, stay safe on the trail.